Christian greetings to our viewers at home. We thank the Lord for yet another opportunity where he allows us to sit at the foot of the cross and we talk about his word with the Holy Spirit explaining it to us. Welcome again to the Great Controversy series. With me here today is Brother Matinda, Sister More Masiwa, Brother Kumalo, Brother Nube. I'm Sister Nube, your host. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Kumalo will pray for us. Let us pray. Our merciful and gracious Father who is in heaven, we thank you so much for having graciously granted us traveling messes uh, and you have gathered us here to discuss about the great controversy. And we know that the, the controversy is between you, God, and between Satan. So we pray that you venture us uh, as we will look at this topic and let nothing uh, disturb us and let this um, presentation be done and, the, and let this discussion be done um, in su with success. We pray to you, Father, asking for your guidance. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and soon coming Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 In chapter one of this series, we're discussing the fall of Jerusalem. And Jesus, in the second chapter, is about to leave and go back to the glories of heaven. Now, Jesus, with his divine eye, looks at the trouble and the persecution his children are about to have in his absence. He looks at the trouble that his disciples are going to have in his absence, and he gives them words of courage, telling them he shall leave the Holy Spirit with them. You see, um, chapter two, the heading of chapter two says persecution in the first centuries. I think as we venture into this chapter, one thing we need to realize and be as certain of is that the followers of Christ must tread the same path of humiliation, reproach, and suffering which their master trod. The enmity that burst forth against the world's Redeemer will be manifested against all who should believe on his name. It is something we need to know that before you even uh, try to believe in Jesus, when you believe in Jesus, you will suffer the same sufferings that he himself went through. I think it's something beautiful we need to, to, to recognize as we, we venture into this chapter. Just like Christ says, you share in my sufferings, we share in his glory, no mm. cross, no crown. Yes. Um, now, these persecutions begin under Nero about the time of martyrdom of Paul. We remember the Paul of Tarsus. Yes. Mm. Uh, during his martyrdom, <coughs> furious with the persecutions of Christians at that time, and all of them were to follow in the footsteps of Christ as they prepare to send the gospel across the world that Christ had already sent them before he left going into this world. You know, when you, when you actually look at it and then when you read the New, the New Testament, you see that um, the, the, the believers were actually warned um, about these persecutions as early as Jesus. He told them that uh, as he has been rejected by the world, so the world will also reject the followers of, of, of Jesus. And when, when you look at it, you will see that uh, when Jesus Christ dies, and then he resurrects and then ascends to heaven and leaves his disciples. And then when the Holy Spirit comes and then they start preaching the gospel, we see uh, in the early chapters of Acts, uh, such as Acts chapter, um, chapter 4 to chapter 5, that the, the, the disciples Peter and John were actually uh, starting to be persecuted by what? By the church, the church leaders, the Pharisees. Uh, because when they preached the, the, the gospel, they were, they, they, they were not hesitant to actually point it out that it was actually the church leaders, the Pharisees, who persecuted um, Jesus Christ, uh, whilst they were with, working hand in hand with the Roman Empire. So we see that actually the, the persecution started very early, but we see it intensifying when Nero takes over. In fact, it was foretold before them that there will be a persecution. They will be persecuted. I think they, I remember when they persecuted Stephen. Stephen was the first one of a uh, who was persecuted once to a stone because of the truth. In fact, the word persecution, it defines that uh, it is to destroy the message that is contrary to your message. Mm. So they destroy them because of the, in fact, they were not destroying per se the apostle, but they were destroying the message that we're carrying. 
because mm. it was the continuation of the controversy. I want to hasten to add that. Um, I want us to take note that <coughs> uh, persecution comes as a result of truth being preached fiercely. Exactly. And then the devil realizes, should truth be allowed to continue moving at the rate at it, which it is going, mm. a falsehood and paganism will be made extinct. Mm, it will yes. be unheard of. Mm. The world might as well attain its purity. Yes. Mm. And then the devil goes out oh, to persecute the children of God so yes. that he hoped by fear some would withdraw yes, and be so. afraid mm. and choose to preserve their lives. Okay, when we are talking persecution here, we are talking a serious measure of, of, of persecution in the sense that some of them were put in, in amphitheaters where, where lions mm. would be set out to come out and devour them. Mm. That's how bad it was. So that everyone who saw what was, what was happening on these podiums would be scared mm. to yes. go out and profess the very truth of the Savior. Yes. yes. The title of the book is The Great Controversy. Just that title itself, it paints a picture. What is a controversy? A controversy is a conflict. It is a divergency of views. And here in this book, The Great Controversy, we are talking about the conflict between good and evil. Mm. So why persecution? It's evil warring against good. Yes. And when we see the vengeance with which the enemy goes after the people of God, that is when we get a glimpse into how serious this conflict is. In fact, what I, I want to, to, to add to what, she, to what she was saying, when we read the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, mm. uh, it, it, it says, I like to put in Kosaman, Ya amba inamba, ya yolo anabangwele, abakrenu mteto katiko, abanobunga nabuka isu. That is the reason people were persecuted. Banobunga ina, they have the testimony of Jesus. Mm. They keep God's commandments. Yes. So God told them that they will be persecuted because of that truth. Mm. Mm. When people are being persecuted, it's like it's, an, it's actually an attempt of destroying the message uh, that those people carry. You know, when you look at it, I, I like the definition um, in, in, in Merriam-Webster's dictionary. It says something that is done, defining persecution, something that is done to prevent possible harm or trouble from happening in the future. So when, when you look at it, I, 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 I read the book and then I, I discovered that, you know what, actually uh, the persecutors are, 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 are doing what they are doing out of fear. What do they fear? They fear that, you know, the, the, the teachings that are being taught by a certain group of people uh, actually contradicts our teachings and they are gaining more influence than the influence that we have. So we fear that our teachings will, 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 will go extinct so that um, their teachings will, will actually take over. So when you look at that, you know, when they were persecuting the Christians and uh, when these people persec uh, persecuted them, they were actually try trying to suppress their message so that their message will not actually destroy their message or destroy their beliefs because they never believed in it, but they, didn't, they also did not want anyone from their ranks to be converted into Christianity. I want us also to look at the fact that when we're talking of Christians here, we are talking about the early church. Mm. Yes. The church that Jesus left when he was going to heaven, these mm. people were imbued by the Holy Spirit. Mm. They yes. were unstoppable. Mm. Yes. yes, Nothing could be done to stop them. They never mm. feared for their lives. Yes. At that time, I want to suppose, they were so true to the words of Paul when he said, to live is Christ and to die is great gain. Great. Yeah. To them, death was gain at that time. So, mm. these people were taken out of earthly luxuries. Yes. That we enjoy now. Yeah. They didn't have. The, they forfeited it. Yeah. They chose to go into prisons. Yes. Go into mountains and hide and continue preaching the gospel. Now I would I would want us to put this practically to our everyday life. Should we be put under such circumstances where we are, we are we are removed from our luxuries that we enjoy our everyday luxuries for the sake of Christ? Would we choose to stand? If we look at the way the church is today, would the church stand if it were to be put in the same circumstances? Mm. That, that's why it's very important to prepare now. Mm. 
so that we can be able to stand when exactly. those things come. Exactly. You see, the reason why we, we, we try by all means now to take step by step to sanctify, to be sanctify ourselves so that we can be able to stand. Exactly. Because if we don't pray now, God now is in his holy place away, sealing his people, those who sigh and those who cry for the things that are happening. So not just those who see and watch and do not pray. You see, these people were prayerful. These people were allowing the Holy Spirit to, to control them. Mm. So the people who can stand now, and the same persecution is coming in future. You see, yes. and the devil saw, saw to it that when he was persecuting those, persecuting those people the way he was persecuting, instead of gospel to go down, it, uh, it multiplies because of their persecution, they were scattered everywhere and mm -hmm. preached to every corner. So that's why they were able to stand because they were, you remember, they were waiting for the Holy Spirit. After waiting for the Holy Spirit during the, time, the day of Pentecost, they started the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel started and they preached the gospel to all world because the Spirit of God were in them. But if we as people, we don't want to repent mm -hmm. and leave everything that separates us from God. Mm -hmm. When you read the book of Isaiah chapter 59, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he, he, he's not too safe to, to, to save, but at the same time he says that yes. it is your iniquities yes, that right. separate right. me from, you see, from mm -hmm. me, between me and you. So if we leave those things and live the righteous life, the Holy Spirit will be in us and we'll be able to stand. I just want to add to, to what Uba Madinda has just said. If we are not really true to God, and if we don't get to a point where we are fully committed to the cause, mm. we will not be able to withstand persecution because the things that these early Christians went through were horrendous. Mm. They were horrifying. These people were thrown to the wild animals and they were torn apart by wild beasts. They were stabbed. They were killed, they were starved, they were imprisoned, and they were subjected to all sorts of horrifying acts. Mm. And um, the writer goes on to say that these people were really pure mm. and committed to the cause. That is why they were able to withstand. And also mm. because of their purity and their commitment, mm. the other people who were watching them were inspired to follow after God because they saw that this is a living religion. Mm -hmm. This is a gospel. Mm -hmm. This is a true mm -hmm. gospel. This is good news. And therefore, the more they were oppressed, the more they increased mm -hmm. because they were pure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, as these Christians were killed, they dead their persecutors and, say, and said, you may continue to kill us. Mm -hmm. Where the blood of one of us is spilled, it becomes a seed yes, for the yes, next one yes. to come out of that. Mm -hmm. So they were not fearful. Yes. They looked at persecution as a way of bringing more believers. Now, and now the odd thing is that even when the persecutors were killing them, if mm -hmm. they were to be asked what wrong have these people done, there was nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like the Israelites did when they were persecuted. Cutting Christ. Mm. Yes. What has it done wrong? Mm. Nothing. They couldn't mm. put their finger on it. Mm. Same applies to this early church. Pure as they are, forging ahead boldly against mm. all odds. When their persecutors were asked, what have they done wrong? No one could find fault in them. Yes. yes. Uh, also, I, you know, I just... I just like how Paul puts it in Hebrews 11, uh, when, when he, uh, he said, uh, and I quote, destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. Mm. And mm. then when you read where, when you read that, that entire chapter, you also find um, a passage where it says, um, you know, when, when, um, when they were actually suffering, they, they never asked for what? For deliverance, because they hoped for a better resurrection. Mm. You know, when, when you look at that, you, and, then, and then I look at, you know, some of us now, you see that, you know what, um, 
we, need, we actually need to grow to reach to that stage where, where you know, we will have confidence in God, uh, where we will live right and, and, and righteously with God, so that when these sufferings come upon us, we will not be afraid to die because we know that we'll partake on the first resurrection. You know, so I, I'm looking at this because, you know, most of us, when we get afflicted, when we, we are met with trials and, 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 tempest, and tempest storms, you know, we tend up to cry up to God and complain and murmur. Yeah like the Israel of old. Yes. But you know, when, when we are fully committed to God, when we have given our lives um, 100% to the Lord and, and sacrificed our lives upon the altar of God, you will see that, you know, whenever, uh, like, you know, we'll, we'll be like Job, like he's, he's a perfect example. When, when trials and tribulations come our way, we, 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 we will not be afraid to take a stand and say, I know that my, my Redeemer lives. Yes. Mm. Thank you so much. We shall be taking a short break. Please do join us soon. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Welcome once again. Uh, we are discussing the persecutions of God's children after Christ had gone back to glory. I want us to understand that we are dealing with a group of people that were not fearful. The group of people that understood they were victorious in Christ Jesus. They had been given guarantee by the presence of Christ around them. Remember, they saw Christ healing the sick amongst them. They saw Christ being crucified, resurrected and going. So this is a group of people that understood very well their savior is going and he shall come back for them again. These people were not afraid. Why? It's because they were following in the footsteps of Christ. Yes. When you read the book of Romans chapter 12, command mm. so because of the joy that was put in, by Christ in them you see these people were not afraid of the persecution, although they were a man was falling before another man, instead they were raising others and others and others until the devil tried to change another strategy. Because by killing them, he was spreading the gospel himself. You, you know, it's it's a very good uh, topic that we just introduced: how the devil changed the strategy. So the devil realizes that the more I use the sword the brighter the gospel shines. Mm. So the devil realizes that I'm not against the people, I'm, I'm against the, the, the gospel, the heart of the message. So he says, I will change a strategy. I will infiltrate the gospel. Because mm. be when I persecute them, the gospel shines brighter. So let me suppress the gospel. So what does the devil do? Instead of killing them by the sword, he introduces the standards of the world into the church. Mm. Mm. And now the church is aligned with the world. Yeah. We hold the standards of the world as the standard of the church. Mm. The gospel is now diluted, but what do I mean? Instead of him persecuting the church with the sword, he says, I will let adultery infiltrate into the church and there will be a church of adultery. Mm. There will be a church that is against God. Instead of using the spear, what does he say? I will introduce the LGBT community into their church and no one dares mention these truths because we have took the standards of the world and we have made them the standard of the church. So now we are still persecuted. Mind you, we are still under persecution, but he has changed the strategy. Mm. He is not using the sword or the spear anymore, but he has infiltrated the church and has diluted the heart of the gospel in such a way that's the reason why there is no persecution. It's because the world has got nothing to persecute. How can you persecute someone who holds what you hold? Mm. Our standards are now the standards of the world. So the world has nothing to persecute. And the devil does not fight with anyone, but is fighting with those who oh. keep God's commandments mm. and have the testimony of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, Ushonja, says so. I will destroy those, this sect, that keep God's commandments, that lift the standard of the gospel. So in order for us to be able to 
to lift up the standard of the gospel. We must be not fake Christians, but we must be true Christians. Live what we preach mm -hmm. so that we can be able to stand. And then how did the devil dilute? When you read Revelation chapter 12 again, he mm -hmm. says the, the serpents take out with his mouth water to destroy the woman. Mm -hmm. What is the water in prophets? Are the people. So mm -hmm. the devil bring people that will dilute the, the truth, the message. And mm. now you find each and every pulpit is no longer the present truth. No. But we preach now. We've got, uh, in fact, we've got motivational speakers. Cars, mm. Instead mm. of preaching. Mm. Instead of preaching the gospel and bringing the, the, the gospel, that will bring the truth to the people so that the people of God can stand. But today we've got the motivational speakers that will encourage the prosperity, all those things. You see, it is not about prosperity, but it is about knowing the gospel and to stand in future. Mm -hmm. You know, this change of strategy actually intrigues me. Okay. So it says that uh, the enemy realized that putting them into prison, killing them, and doing all that, uh, all that, that he was doing was actually like adding fuel to fire. Mm. So now this change of strategy is very insidious and it is very sneaky. Mm. And the writer writes here and she says, now the church was in fearful peril. Mm -hmm. And she says now the danger was more than it was when the church was being physically abused. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, to build on, on to, to what the previous speakers have said. And I just want to pose a question and say, do we realize that this is the situation that we are in? Mm -hmm. And now that we have realized it, how are we coming up to fight this new persecution? Mm -hmm. That's a question, and that's food for thought. This new strategy of Satan, you know, um, when, when he's first introduced in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 3, he, he what? When he chooses his subjects, now mind the subjects, when he chooses the subjects, uh, when they describe the snake, they say that the snake was a cunning, very cunning animal. So now when, when, when Satan chooses his subjects uh, that, were, that, that, that are going to perpet, uh, perpetuate the, what, the, the lies, that are going to spread the lies, his lies, he, what, he chooses the very best um, of the best. He, he, you know, you know he, he, he doesn't go for mediocre people mm -hmm. who do not know what they do. He chooses the, the, the smartest people, the intelligent people, you know, to, to do the work for him. So now when you look at that, you will see that, um, you know, his form of deception uh, is that he, he tells you the truth. He tells you the truth and then he, he, he attach to the truth what just a small portion of lies, right? So he just, he, he just put lies there. So when it is presented to you, 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 you see it as truth um, because it, it, like, it, it encompasses a lot of truth. You fail to see the lies in it. So that is what I, I, that is what that, that I just wanted to, um, you know, to, to put it out there. That there are lies, but those lies are not easy to see. Mm. They are, they are, they're not easily manifested. So the way for us to fight this kind of persecution of bringing lies mingled with truth and being taught as truth is that we know what the truth is. In order for you to be able to spot the fake, you must know the original. Mm. So just go to the, just go to a, Go to your word, study your word, know your word, so that when so so so, so that when false teachings are being presented, you can just easily spot it. No, no, that is not what I read in my Bible. Mm. Thank you very much. Let's look at some of the practical deceptions mm. that the devil has brought to the church. For example, the early church led a life of simplicity. Amen. Mm. Yes. Amen. Now mm. let's look at our current church. Pompous, arrogant. Yeah. We mm. want to display wealth. Yeah. Nothing like the character of Christ. Mm. Christ, wa Christ was a humble servant. Yes. We never even had a place to lay his hand. Mm. But that is not what the current church is portraying. Yes. We look at the other ways that the devil has diluted uh, um, the, the gospel in the church. For example, uh, when it comes to times of offering mm. in the then church, people would display mm. what they'll be giving yes. for offering. Yes. And then I want us to draw attention back to the widow that Christ refers to and says she has given more oh. than everybody because she gave everything that she, what she had. So 
we are saying to the current church, let us run away from some of those things that the devil has introduced to mm. dilute the gospel. Let's go back to the simplicity of the early church, mm. where a brother was able to see that another brother leaks. Mm. Yes. And I would take a garment if I had two mm. and give to the brother. Yes. And take bread if I had mm. and share it with the brother. Yes. But in the world that we are in now, I must be seen that I have more than somebody else, which is one of the vices yeah. that the devil has used to dilute the church. Yes, mm. that is why we are here to introduce this book of uh, great controversy. Mm. You see, because one of the things that the devil makes is that the people of God must not read the spirit of prophecy mm. anymore. Mm. You see, the spirit of prophecy is supposed to be read to be read in front of the people every time, so that, in fact, it's supposed to be. Bible and spirit of prophecy. So that in the spirit of prophecy, it, in fact, it elaborate uh, what God has said in the Bible. For instance, he say, the Bible says that Jesus is coming. Mm. But when you read uh, the, the great controversy, it will tell you how Jesus is coming now. Mm. It does not uh, contrary to the Bible. So that's why it's very, it's very, it's very important. If we as the Seventh Day Adventists, so to be able to keep the standard of uh, of uh, of uh, Christianity, you see, mm. we need to read the spirit of prophecy, mm. so that these things, when they come, they dilute. We can see there are so many things now that come to the church. In fact, the state and the church does not come together. No. It does not come together. Yeah. And then these things, they come little, little, little by little as if they are good things. Mm. We even planned our programs in the church mm. with the world. Mm. You see, mm. for instance, if we plan the youth day, we will do in June 16. June 16. Why? You mm. see, which is the, the world is coming in so that the standard of the church you see, must go down. Mm. Must Actually, go down. you know, Mr. Matinda, that's what someone else phrased as the creeping compromise. It slowly comes into the church and we slowly get used to it until it gets to a certain point whereby it now seems like it's the right thing to do. Although the Bible simply states that it's against what God wants. But what are we talking about? We now live in a world whereby we go to, to, to church on Sabbath, but we do not keep the Sabbath. Yes, mm. we have made it's now more important to us for you to see me at church on the Sabbath. But as soon as I get home, I start doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing on the Sabbath. Mm. We are now a church that is OK with liars, mm. a church that breaks the commandments of God. But they don't see that they are doing it because it has came into the church little by little. And it gets to a point whereby we praise each other for breaking the commandments mm. of God. Yes. Mm. Mm. We praise each other. We have let these creeping compromise to come into the church and they have infiltrated the church to a certain point that we don't even see it anymore. We now see it as something normal to break the commandments of God mm. because we have let these creeping compromises come little by little until they are now a huge deal and we can't even realize it. You know what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit? It's like the, the matter of the Holy Spirit. He tells you not to do something, but the more you do it, the less you hear him. Mm. Mm. The Holy Spirit has been trying to guide us into certain truths, but the more we have ignored him as a church, mm. we are now even failing to hear him at all. When you look at it uh, in the context of the book, uh, you see that as they were persecuted physically, okay, so these people were, you know, they were they were living in fear. They were they were, you know they were being hunted down like animals. They left their homes to stay uh, like to stay to find refuge and stay in in in, in caves. But when you you know when you continue to look at it as the as the creeping compromise comes uh, as as now as now the Roman. Um, uh, um, power now claims to to be converted to Christianity and calls them in to be joined with them. Uh, now, what they do, what they do is that you know most of Christians, you know, buy in, into that and they actually join forces with what now with this um, papal power or actually uh, the, the 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 Roman power that now that that professes that professes to be what, to be converted to, into Christianity. And then now they share with them in, what, in, what, in their paganism. And when I look at that, I see, 
I see that thing as very dangerous because, uh, you know, sometimes when we are faced with perils, sometimes when you are persecuted, uh, we attempted to what? We attempted to exchange, to actually sell the truth. Mm -hmm. For what? For peace and safety. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we exchange, you say, you know what? Just give us peace. We will give you the truth. And then you, you can throw it down underfoot if you want to. So that so long as we are safe, we are okay. We don't, we don't we no longer, it, 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 you know, you know, no, no, this thing of being fearful Christians is not right because it makes us, you know, um, easy targets uh, for 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 what, for these powers that enforces us to join them in their in, in, in their paganism. Thank you so much. When we come back from the break that we are going into now, we want to look at some of the strategies that the devil used in the then Israel that he is using to, in the now Israel mm. that stopped Israel from getting into Canaan. That will stop the current Israel to make it to the heavenly Canaan. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm. Welcome once again. We are still discussing the issue of error creeping into the church and therefore causing the church of God to err. I want us to look at a scenario here. When the children of Israel left Egypt going to Canaan, they reached the borders of Jordan. And a prophet who was said to be a prophet of God, Balak, is asked by a heathen king with some worldly favor and gain to go and curse the children of Israel. Balak tries, but instead he blesses them and goes back to the very same king to say, when I try to curse them, I bless them. And then the king says, try, come up with something, come up with a strategy. You know this God, you have saved him. Try, come up with something. And then Balak says, the only way I can manage to curse them is to make them sin against their mm. God. Yes. And then Moabites, women, women come into the camp of Israel. Yeah. And adultery was committed mm. in the camp of Israel. Mm. God's wrath was kindled. 24,000 men died that day mm. until Moses, was it Moses or Aaron, took a censor to separate the dead from the living mm. so that mm. he could stay the wrath of God. What am, I, what am I getting to here? This was the infiltration of error. <laughs> when Israel is pure, yes. it cannot be cased. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When Israel has accepted error, yeah. then demons have yeah. an opportunity of coming in and dancing. Mm. In the oh, church of God. So the very same strategy that the devil used then of physical adultery is the very strategy now that he's using of spiritual adultery to make sure that when we are at the banks of Jordan, when we can look afar and see Canaan, we don't make it. Mm. Physical adultery is just a result of the root cause, which is what spiritual adultery Mm. Now, uh, you know, when, when, when the people of God actually commit themselves to what? To, to, to spiritual adultery, then all these other sins, such as physical adultery, come in. Because when, when you look at that scenario, you will discover that they were worshipping where? At Baal Peril. They were worshipping the images of the Moabites and the Midianites. They were worshipping the, the Baal Peril. So uh, as they were worshipping, then these women came and said, and what, and said truth to them so that they can what? They can sleep with them. And then uh, by that, uh, the, the wrath of God was kindled. So when, when you look at this, I, I like um, the, the, the story that you brought up of Balak. Uh, because when you see Balak, Balak is actually the servant of God. God speaks to him uh, so that he, you know, he, he can do the things that God uh, tells him to do. So now when you look at that, we see him now being what now? Being called by who? The king of the Moabites, Balak, to come forward and, what, and curse the children of God. So now Balak, what, what Balak is doing is actually employing the children of God to curse the other children of God. He, he, he is what now? He's making the church fight with each other. So that is how, um, you know, this criminal compromise comes in. Because what the devil does is that he deceives uh, some of us in, in the church so that we can rise up and what and fight with other brothers instead of, un of being united in love we work now we rise up and actually what and fight other brothers because of what because we are selfish we want the world gains in fact uh, the devil takes away the focus 
That's mm -hmm. only what he's doing to Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take away from the focus from God. Mm -hmm. You see, God protect his people. Mm -hmm. So by Balaam, uh, uh, Balak, Balak uh, blessing the children of God, in fact, it was coming from God because they mm. were true. Yes. They were sincere that mm. time. Until such time, they make uh, an adult with the enemy. Mm. You see, to make an adultery to, uh, is, is when somebody is sleeping with another man or is sleeping with another woman. That is adultery. Mm. And then we've got a man with Jesus Christ. We've got a man who is the devil. Mm. So if we sleep the blanket with the devil, we, are, we make an adultery against yes. You see, so in other words, if we introduce mm. things mm. in mm. the church mm. that are contrary to our message, mm. we, that is an adultery. Yes. So in other words, even our singing, Mm. Let's make an example. Mm. Our singing, when we sing, we mm. cannot sing like Babylonians. No. Mm. You see, what is introduced by the devil now is taking away, he just changed the lyrics of the music mm. and put his, the, the, he put the lyrics of God, but the, the, rhythm. Beat, the beat, you, mm. st you still have the, that dance. You see, yeah. you see, that's what the devil introduced to the church. Mm. So that the people, they must be, he dilute the message of, uh, of, of the children of God. And then he brings the things. Even, I remember one day, uh, uh, I was preaching uh, in a funeral in, mm. of the Seventh-day Adventist people. Mm. You see, after that, now we're taking the coffin out. And the Seventh-day Adventist people, brothers, it was difficult before they go out uh, of the... Of the, of, of the house where we, we were gathering. Mm. They were carrying the coffin. They say, no, no, no. this coffin must not go this way, hey. that way. I say, go out, brethren, because mm. this coffin, this man will rise again. Mm. You know, there's, a spirit, there's that mind that now we bring some of the customs mm. in God's church. Mm -hmm. And as a result today, the devil is bringing something that we called culture. That mm. will separate. You see, in a separation, there's no power of God. But mm. if we speak one thing, it's one of the things that the devil is bringing in the church now separation. to bring back our culture so that mm -hmm. there's a division in the church of God. That's what the devil infiltrates the church, persecuting the church of God. But if we've got one mind, one, one thinking, we mm. think we have one mind, one, one saying, when you meet one another, as a seventh-day Adventist, we'll say, the verse says, thou says the Lord, mm. then we'll be one in Christ. Mm. Yes. Um, the, the Apostle John, in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, he says, be thou faithful unto death, and mm. I'll give thee a crown of life. And therefore, from what we, we're just saying now, we, we can just conclude and say, it's about a personal relationship with God now. Mm. Because the enemy is persecuting us by fighting principle. And we cannot be safe in numbers. Mm. We cannot be safe in numbers, but we can only be safe as long as we follow the bidding of the Holy Spirit. But then mm. I just want to, to throw a spanner into the works. Maybe I'm taking you back, I don't know. But I just want to ask, why does God allow persecution? Because mm. we realize that persecution causes a lot of pain. Mm. And it causes a lot of loss. Yes. Mm. Even as we're speaking of infiltration right now, eh, even during the Israelite times, there are so many Israelites who did not enter into Canaan because mm. they failed in the persecution. Yes. So uh, Moses writes in Exodus chapter 15, verse 3, and he says, the Lord is a warrior. Mm. God mm. is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Mm. Yeah. So why does our warrior allow us to go through these difficulties? In fact, to answer that question that you asked, why God allowed this persecution to happen? Mm. Mm. Because God is, can protect anything to, mm. to happen. You know, when you are true to God, mm. You are a trusted one. Yeah. And God is sure that even the devil cannot destroy you. Mm -hmm. Remember Job. Yes. He was in big problem. But God allowed the devil to come to because he knew the heart of Job. You cannot change because of the 
troubles that he had. In through. fact, in a crisis, it's where God showed his power. Exactly. In any crisis, God showed his power so mm. that he, the nation can, can know, can see him through the person who is persecuted. Yeah. You see, today we are reading about the, 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 those heroes yes, that were persecuted today. Even us, we can stand. If those people can stand, why can't we stand? Mm. Because they were going together with God. Mm. You see, in every crisis in, 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 that is happening, God was revealing himself. You see, he mm. knows that in each and every country. You remember Daniel? He was in Lion's Den. Mm. Uh, when he came... Uh, from the, they, they throw him in a, in a lion's, lion's den. den. Mm. God immediately changed their diet. Mm. You see, they when they, 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 we see, when they smell <laughs> that, that, that Daniel, yeah, when they smell, they smell cabbages and spinaches <laughs> because God protected Daniel. Yes. God was first in the fire mm. when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego oh, came in the fire. Mm. So God allowed these things so that he show can his show his power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also to be a bit practical about the matter. Sorry, you'll come after me, my brother. If, if a group of children were playing outside and the child gets hurt, mm -hmm. who is the first person they run to? Yeah, they run mother, to their mother, biological yeah. mom and dad, yes. dad to look for comfort. Yes. That's what happens with Christians. Yes. When we feel pain, when we feel afflicted, yes. when we feel alienated, the yes. first place that we want to run to is to our father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you. You know, it, it's, it's a very actually beautiful question. Mm. the question as to why we are persecuted. I'm, I think, firstly, we need to understand that God is not behind the persecution. Amen. Mm. Him being God, he allows the persecution, exactly. but he does not cause the persecution. Mm. So he allows us to go through stuff, but why? That's where the, the, the beauty of it is. While we are still on earth, let us understand that we are not in heaven. Mm. We, were, we, 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 are, we are on earth with a mission. Mm. And our mission does not align with that of the world. Mm. I am actually, um, what's the right word? I, I'm actually troubled when we are in a state whereby we are not facing any persecution. Mm -hmm. Because you know what Mrs. Ellen G. White says that means? She says it means we are now conformed with the standards mm. of the world. Exactly. So when the world sees us, it sees one of its own, mm. and it cannot persecute those who hold its yeah. standards. Exactly. Our standards have now been aligned with the standards of the world. Oh. We have now taken the world into the church. We are now part of the world, and the world is now part of the church. And then God says in Revelation, you are the church of Laodicea, neither hot or cold. Mm. I will spew you out of my mouth. Mm. I think it's a calling for us as maybe the Christian family mm. that we need to stand up and go back to the principle and yes. go back to the Bible mm. and, and do away with this creeping compromise of the world. Mm. Because as long as we let the world come into the church, mm. nothing will go forward. And we are saying we're waiting for Christ. Which Christ are we waiting for while we are still enjoying with the world? Mm. Before Christ comes, we need to spread the word. And when we, ha we have spread the word, and then when they realize that we, we, we are an, uh, an unstoppable force, then they will try to stop us. Then comes the persecutions. Mm. Thank you very much. Closing remarks, 10 seconds each. Please, let's wrap this up. What I want to say today, it is very important for the Israel of today to go back to the books and mm. read the book of, uh, especially the great controversy, mm. the mm. book that the devil wanted to destroy many times. Mm. Mm. Because it was written twice and it was burnt. Even the devil does not want Sister White to write it. He was very ill. But that book, today, I'm where I am. I'm here to this church because of that book coming from jail. It's, it's a very powerful book. When you read the book, it will open your mind so that you can, you can actually reflect upon yourself and see whether you are at variance with the devil or you are friends with him. So this book actually exposes the works of the devil. So if you want to know where you stand, read that book and the Bible. Um, I think everything has been said. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, as we are closing this topic, let, let me hasten to say the church today needs leaders. We shall stand and, and, and bring a sense of truth 
mm. and run in between the dead and the living yes. because the dead today are not outside the church. They are mm. in the church because mm. infiltration has been done in the church. We look for those leaders who we'll stand in between the living and the dead. In closing, we shall read Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8, verses 38. As this world goes towards the final persecution before the second coming, Paul then says, For I am persuaded mm. that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor mm. depths, nor any other creature shall be, shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. In closing, we are going to ask Sister Modesto to close in prayer. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so much for this honor to be able to discuss such great truths and such pertinent issues, oh dear God. Mm. But we just pray that may this not be in vain. Oh, yes, we Lord. pray that there may be a revival of the faith and the power that the early church had. Oh, yes, so that, dear God, when you come in the clouds of glory, mm. we may be ready to meet you. Yes, Open our eyes so that we may mm. see the tools that the enemy is using against us. Mm. So that we may always be able to conquer him in your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.